Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast is a Christ-centered podcast. Established in 2019 and hosted weekly by Pastor Chris Busher. Addressing a host of topics such as the Great Commission, Christian discipleship, and often featuring interviews with special guests who are experts in their field. The views and events expressed on this podcast and all related materials belong solely to their author and not necessarily to the author's employer, organization, committee, or other group or individual. While all attempts are made to present accurate information, some information may become outdated over time. Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast makes every attempt to timely update any and all such information. Without further delay, here's another powerful episode of Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. Welcome back to another episode of Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. Once again, we have an amazing guest in the studio today, Stephen Connolly. Stephen, thank you for being here. How are you today? I'm good. Thanks for having me, Dallas. Like I was mentioning a little bit before we began this interview today, that I've been talking about American politics and Republican and Democrats here in Brazil with some of my students in the English school. And so you have recently wrote a book called The God Bet. Yes. And so I'm going to give a little bit of description for you guys to hear what this is. Would God register to vote as a Republican or a Democrat? And you are willing to risk millions on the answer. This is a proactive look at how religious voters can cut through the media spin in the mess of American politics to identify what the creator would think. And I mean, just looking at that is like, wow, what are we going to talk about today? What are we going to get into? I know this is going to be an exciting interview. So Stephen, I'm glad to have you here. Thank you. Before we get into the book a little bit more, I would just like to ask you to share your testimony with the listeners today. Maybe where you grew up, how you met Jesus, and how it's kind of changed your life. Well, I I grew up in Southern California. Um, I was born in Huntington Beach, and I've pretty much lived here my whole life. Um, I played baseball, so the only, you know, real trips away, I mean, I have been baseball trips. I played baseball some in Mexico, um, but I was lucky enough and fortunate enough to grow up with two Christian parents. I grew up in church. Um, so I've, I've been going to church my whole life and I, you know, they talk about privilege and I'm very privileged to have grown up with two Christian parents who, who raised me the right way. That's good. That's a great thing. And what age did you say you became a Christian? Uh, well, I mean, I've been going to church my whole life. Uh, I accepted the Lord when I was pretty, pretty young. I was like five or That's six. Good. Okay. A lot of people, you know, they live in the church, they grew up in the church, but they don't make that decision for themselves until later in life. So I'm glad for you. It was early. That is true. That's a great thing. And I've never left. I know a lot of people leave and come back, but. That's good. And so growing up in the church, knowing who Jesus was from the start, I mean, that puts you ahead of a lot of people. And so moving forward, you wrote this book today called The God Bet. And so can you give us just a brief introduction of your book that you wrote? Sure. Um, it started as a, <laughs> how a lot of things start with nowadays on uh, social media. Uh, I had somebody on Facebook complaining, somebody that I knew as a Christian who, who was complaining that he was annoyed that people assume that because he's a Christian, he's also a Republican. And honestly, my first thought was, that's a strange thing to be annoyed about because God is a Republican. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> that's where I got the idea. You're listening to the Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. We'll be right back after this quick word from our sponsors. Understanding and abiding in the fear of the Lord is an essential kingdom concept, beneficial for both the believer and the unbeliever alike of hating evil. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13. And then to flee from evil, to then abide in the light as he is in the light. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. Find your copy, Understanding the Fear of the Lord, on Amazon today. Are you ready for a transformation that will guide success in all areas of your life? If you're looking for the ideal speaker, look no further. Reverend Rich is passionate about the transformation and success you feel you need in your life. In return, he comes with ancient wisdom that is proven in his life and countless others. Need a mentor? Don't forget to go to www.u2canberich.com to book and take advantage of Reverend Rich's free one-on-one coaching session. Now let's return to today's podcast. 
Um, I am also a poker player. I have played at the World Series of Poker in Las Vegas uh, Wait, you pretty played, much every year. You played? Yes, I play poker. Wow, that's, that's incredible. You played in the World <laughs> Tournament. That's pretty crazy. Wow. Yes, the World Series of Poker. I actually have three World Series of Poker caches where I've made it into the money and, and made hmm. money. But uh, being kind of a gambler, I thought, I'm going to write about this. And that's going to be my hook is I'm willing to wager that God is a Republican. I'm so sure of it. I decided that I would write this bet with a hook that I would bet a million dollars to anybody that God is a Republican. I like it. <laughs> and so what inspired you to write the book? So you had the hook now, but now what gets into the writing of the book? Now, the writing of the book, um, I think that, I mean, I've grown up as I said, with, with two Christian parents, and I have hopefully um, stuck to those values that they taught me from the Bible. And when you look at the Bible, and if you look at politics in the United States today, there is a stark divide between the right, which is the Republican Party, and the left, which, which is the Democrats and where they stand on issues that come from the Bible. Well, everything comes from the Bible, but where they stand as far as closer to what the Bible teaches and mm -hmm. being further from it. And on every single issue, the Republican Party is closer to yeah. what the Bible says. And in the book, I go through different issues and explain what the Bible says about them and, and where our values should be as Christians and what each party says about those issues and try to explain why the Republican Party is the way they are and closer to the Bible and why the left is, you know, kind of antithetical to it. And I want to go back to the question that you said about your friend who was irritated just because he was a Christian, people assumed he was a Republican. What was his reasoning behind not being a Republican and wagering against the Christianity and those things? Uh, that is part of what's discussed in the book. Um, I, I'll tell you, the, the most important chapter to me is the very first chapter where it explains the terms of the bet and how the bet would work, but most importantly, where we get our values from. And as I explain, without God, there is no right or wrong. We have to have our values. Uh, I explain it in this way. There, there are three things that have to be true for anything to be right or wrong. And one of those things is it has to, it has to come from an authority source. Otherwise, it's just one person's word, one person's feelings against the other person's feelings. If I say, I think stealing is wrong, and you say, I think stealing is fine, there's nothing that makes me right and you wrong except for the fact that God says that stealing the word is wrong. of God is our plumb line makes total sense. Yes. And I think there are a lot of people who live by their feelings and they put those feelings ahead of what, what the Bible says. And a lot of them will just straight up say that, but a lot of them will try to twist the Bible into what they want it to be. And I think that's what's happening in a lot of places nowadays. Like I was saying before, as I was explaining some of the American politics to my Brazilian uh, students here who are learning English, and so our topic was American politics, and I was trying to explain some of the stances of the Republicans and some of the stances of the Democrats. And then, like, like you were saying, the question is, what is right and wrong? And, and then I talked about how different states represent different parties as well, right? And that was the thing. Like, what, dis what discerns right and wrong, right and wrong? And when you're not a Christian, it's so hard yeah. to understand that. It's so hard to pick a side, really, when you don't have the Christianity as the plumb line. And it's so important that the Word of God yes. is our plumb line. Absolutely. You have to have that, that foundation that, you know, as, as it says in the Bible, that, you know, you got to build it on the solid rock. <laughs> you, you have to have the foundation to, mm -hmm. to make those values decisions. Otherwise, it shifts. 
And it's another thing. Why do you believe what you believe? Do you believe that just because your parents believed it, because their parents believed it, because you were told to believe it in school? Like, why do you believe what you believe? And I mean, that's just as much politics as it is Christianity. Why are you a Christian today? What has God done in your life for you to tell other people? Again, why are you a Republican today? You need to know the difference. You know, you need to know. Uh, in school, growing up, I never yeah. knew why I wanted this or wanted that. It was just because my parents did it. But now I understand why I choose this, right? Absolutely. It, it Honestly, for me, that's that's an interesting thought. Um, I did grow up, my, my parents were, you know, Republicans. I grew up, um, my dad was a, a big Republican. Uh, I know he took me out walking precincts to get out the vote back when I was a tiny, tiny child. Um, but it's true. I didn't really understand. I, you know, I didn't care at that point. I think when it really hit me was in high school. I had a teacher who I, I liked the teacher, um, but he was, you know, like most teachers up here, the education system up here is very left wing. Um, and he, he was saying things and I, I was thinking that isn't true. That doesn't, you know, hold water with me that what he was saying didn't make sense. And that's when I first kind of gotten into politics where I understood it. I started looking into the things he was saying and uh, comparing those to my values and seeing how these left wing ideas don't fit with Christianity. Yeah. They, they are morally opposed to a lot of the things that we should be fighting for as Christians. And I have a few of these topics, these political stances from different views and different ideas. And so I just want to talk about that. In your book, you described in the description of the book, gay marriage and abortion. And so let's start with those two, and then we'll kind of jump into some other ideas. But with those two, what can your book give us from these two topics? Okay. Well, you know, most of the time when people talk about Christians and voting and why they are conservative. Those are the two things, the two issues that people talk about. Those are the, you know, the obvious ones where morality and uh, politics kind of converge. Um, with homosexuality, the Bible is clear that homosexuality is a sin. Um, Old Testament and New Testament, you know, there's there's verses in Leviticus, obviously, but if you go to the New Testament, there, there's there's verses in Romans and uh, Corinthians, I believe, um, that talk about how homosexuality is a sin. Mm -hmm. um, so going by the Bible, that is truth. Um, and if you look at politics in the United States today, uh, the the main way that that converged with politics was the the gay marriage issue. And uh, the Democrat Party was for redefining marriage. I, I, I want to make clear that it, that's what it's doing is it's just redefining the word. It's not actually changing any of the, the morality or anything like that. And Republicans for, were for keeping traditional marriage. Um, now, it's, it's gone to the Supreme Court here in the United States, which decides what is constitutional and what is not and they have basically made it to where the word marriage has been redefined and it includes homosexual couples now as a christian and as a republican let me tell you as far as republican values republicans believe that the government should stay out of most things the government shouldn't get involved in anything. People should be free to do what they want. There's a saying that you, sh you should be free uh, to swing your arms wherever you want up until the end of my nose, which basically means you can do things even if they're wrong, as long as you're not hurting me. You can't punch somebody in the face. You can't, you know, you can't steal from somebody. You can't murder somebody. And that's generally what a Republican conservative believes. So as a, as a Republican, uh, they, the the left gives false frames. They they make up stories that try to paint Republicans mm -hmm. in a bad way. So they will say that conservatives 
want to control what people do in their bedrooms. They want to, you know, persecute homosexuals. Mm -hmm. But that is actually not true. Um, as a Republican, as a conservative, I don't think that the government should get involved. I think they should stay out of it entirely. I think we as Christians should tell the truth and say that it is a sin. But it's not our job to punish people for you know for their sins. Uh, homosexuality should be legal, um, but it shouldn't be forced upon the rest of us. And that's the problem that we're having now is the, the gay lobby is trying to get businesses destroyed. Um, you look at the, the baker in Colorado who didn't want to bake a, a wedding cake for a gay marriage. And he's been had his business boycotted and the government got involved and started telling him he has to make the cakes for the gay wedding. And they had ended up going all the way up to the Supreme Court. He fortunately won, but that's what, that's the situation we're in now where Christians are being persecuted for trying to do what they think is right, mm -hmm. according to the Bible. And that's where Republicans have to step in and defend those people because that is, is, yeah. Not right. Yeah. I remember that story a few years yeah. ago. Yeah, it, it it's a big story and it's it's I mean they've taken him back in. They they've done the same thing to him now with uh uh I think a transgender person wanted a cake as well that wanted to he wanted him to make him a cake that was like blue on the outside and pink on the inside cuz he mm. he is a man who thinks he's a woman, you know, there's, they're really going after this guy and they're, it's, it's not right. Um, so conservatives, Republicans have to defend those people. My question with this is, as I was explaining some of these politics to some of my Brazilian students here, it was a very interesting time. I'm telling you, <laughs> one of the questions they were <laughs> asking was America is considered the land of the free right? Land of the free, home of the brave. That's kind of what we yeah. consider America. And they're saying, well, if the Republicans yeah. think that there should be more freedom, but should it that mean that there should be gay marriage legal? Doesn't that mean that there should be drugs legal? Doesn't that mean that there should be abortion legal if there's freedom, right? That's what freedom is. And it's the, di like, where's the line of freedom? I'll just ask you that. Where is the line of freedom? Well, I, it, it's in that, that uh, saying that I told you that that you're you should be free to do anything is you know you can swing your arms wherever as, up until the end of my nose you can't yeah. you can't hurt somebody else and that's the difference I think homosexuality should be legal like I said mm -hmm. I don't think the government should get involved at all I think it should be up to the individual what they do with their lives mm -hmm. as long as it doesn't hurt somebody else um, then the business owners. Uh, you know, it, it's happened to florists as well. Basically, anybody in the in the wedding industry is in this situation now, where the the left will bring the government in and try to hurt those businesses, and the government should stay out of it. The businesses should be free to make their decisions as well. Um, the line there is the abortion issue, um, and the reason is because it does hurt somebody else. It hurts the unborn child. Um, that's why the government should step in on that issue. It actually is taking away somebody else's rights, the, the unborn child. And as a Christian, the, the real issue on that is obviously, is an unborn child a baby? Or is it, like the left will call it, just a fetus? And I actually go to the Bible on that. Um, the, well, I mean, I, I try to go to the Bible on all of these, but um, if you look at, in Genesis, um, Jacob and Esau, um, it says that they struggled within Rebecca's womb together. It says the children struggled within her. And if you go to the original Hebrew, that word that is translated as children is the same word that is used almost 5,000 other times in the Old Testament for children. And in almost all of those instances, it is for born children for living children so it's the same word 
uh, in the New Testament, it's the same thing. Um, when Mary visited visited Elizabeth, Elizabeth says that the baby in her womb leaped for joy, which ended up being John the Baptist. But the Greek word that she uses, they use for baby is translated in other parts of the Bible as babe or child or infant or young child. So it's, it is talking about a living child. It is, it, so a baby in the womb is a living child. And so killing that is murder. And there's, that's where the line is drawn. Like I said, conservatives only want the government to step in when somebody is hurting somebody else. Mm -hmm. In talking about that, you kind of you kind of open up into the next two questions already. If the government should have more or less control, and so the first one, the government should have more or less control over economic issues, taxes, business, employment, workers' rights. And so, what can your book give us from that? You already have mentioned that the Republicans lean toward uh, more freedom, and the other. Okay, so go ahead and share some of that. Yeah, economics is is interesting because that is you hear a lot of people on the left say that, oh, you know, Republicans are only the Christians when it comes to abortion and homosexuality. But as I said, I think in every issue, the Republican Party is closer to what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. As far as economics go, the Republican Party is for less government involvement. They think that what works is important. Um, intentions the the left will often try to paint Republicans as having bad intentions, which is not true. I think both sides want to help people, but and and the Bible is very clear that we're supposed to help help mm -hmm. the poor, for example. Uh, but like I said, the intentions and the results are important. And if you actually look at it, this verse kind of hit me uh, in Second Corinthians uh, nine. 7 through 9, it says that each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will, be abound, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor, their righteousness endures forever. So, it comes down to that not reluctantly or under compulsion part of the verse. Taxes are compulsion. And if you are taking more taxes and compelling people to give mm -hmm. to the poor, A, it's less effective, honestly, because the government is less effective at, at helping the poor than a charity is because the charity has to be you know they have to work they have to actually work you know what they're doing they can't waste their money because it's it's limited the government is renowned for wasting money uh so the charity is more effective for one but it's free it i mean it's it's not under compulsion people are giving by their heart as opposed to being forced to give and what ends up happening is if the government is forcing people to give more taxes, uh, they see that as kind of letting them off the hook. They don't have to give to charity because the government should be taking care of these people. The government should be taking care of the poor. They're doing this. They're doing that. They're taking all my tax money. It's it's not up to me. And it actually, if you look at the numbers, it pans out that way. Um, if you look, you you had mentioned the different states. And the Republican states, they, they call them red states here, mm -hmm. the Republican states, because that's the when they, when they do the voting, that's what color they they paint the board when it's a it's a win for a Republican. So in the red states, the Republican states, they actually give more on more per capita to charity than the blue states. Um, and it goes the same as for time. They give more time, more money, and they actually are more involved with charitable giving than the blue states who think it's on the government. And as far as the taxes go, I mean, it should be kind of obvious that if I say I want to give and give to charity, it's, it's a lot different than saying I want to help the poor 
See, if I say I want to help the poor and give to charity, that's way different mm-hmm. than saying I want to help the poor. Let's raise taxes on that guy over there to help the poor. In my mind, that doesn't even connect at all. I've never considered that the same thing to me. Yeah, it's. It, I mean, it's a different way of looking at things. You you have to look at the results, like I said, as opposed to just looking at people's intentions. Because I don't think anybody mm-hmm. wants you know people to you know starve or anything. And in the United States, people really don't because we're very blessed here. But it's it's very important that we take that cheerful giver thing and and make that a possibility you you when you have the government doing everything it takes that away from the people i heard a very interesting perspective a few years ago i don't remember who told me or why i was talking about it but they said kind of like what you're saying is that the government should should lean back should do less things and if the church would pick up and do what they're supposed to do giving to the poor taking care of the widows taking care of the orphans you know then the government wouldn't have to do it you know, if the church would do what we're supposed to do, taking care of all those things, that's what the Bible says it's supposed to look like. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. Like, I don't know if that's possible to to establish or to create, but that's a really cool perspective that that's what the church is supposed to be doing. And even if the government's not doing it or is doing it, I think we're still supposed to do it according to the Bible, right? Yeah, the, the definitely. Individuals are still supposed to take care of the poor. And I think Part of the problem is when the government's doing it, they're ineffective, like I said. Um, The way that the government does it, it, instead of helping the poor, it actually causes the poor to rely on the government. And Mm -hmm. that actually hurts the poor. That that does not help them at all. Um, So it, it, it actually is a reverse from what should be happening. One of my students is actually from Venezuela. And so he's given me the other perspective from his culture and his country and their laws and how they are dependent on on the government. And it's just complete chaos compared to the United States. And I'm I'm sure sure you're familiar with the Venezuela situation right now. Exactly. Socialism. And that Mm -hmm. is unfortunately where the left is here. I mean, we had we had Bernie Sanders who ran for president and he calls himself a socialist. Um, we have, you know, a, a actually a pretty large number of people in the Democrat Party who have supported socialist causes, and they're unfortunately pushing uh, Joe Biden, who's the the nominee from from the Democrats, that that direction as well. Who <laughs> I don't know if we should talk about his mental capacity, but I think he's a little bit old and senile at this point, honestly. And so the people controlling him are pushing him that direction. And that's that's a scary thing here in the United States. I want to talk about the, the scariest thing in my mind is what happens in the future. Hopefully this never happens, but who knows really that maybe Christianity becomes illegal. Maybe the freedom of religion is not allowed anymore. You know, let's just talk about this hypothetical for a second. What is the Christian stance on this? What do we I mean, do? That's, that's a scary thought. We have to fight now. That's that's what I'm saying. Um, we have to get out and vote. And I think the way to do it is to vote in Republicans. And uh, the Republicans are not perfect by any means, but if you keep the government out of it, it leaves it up to the people. And that's what we need to do. And then we need to, well, I mean, we should be doing this now mm-hmm. anyway. We should be speaking to the hearts and the minds of the people and, and changing minds. Th- that's ultimately the only way to change it in the long run is to change the minds of the people, especially here in the United States, because this government is made up of the people. As, as Abraham Lincoln said in his Gettysburg Address, this is a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. We are the government, so we have to change hearts and minds here. And by, <laughs> I, I hate to sound like an Old Testament prophet, but we have to repent and come back to God. And that's that's the only way to ultimately. I mean, ultimately, that's what it is, really. The part of the gospel is repent, man. You got to change Absolutely. your ways. You can't keep living this way because it's not correct. It's just not what the Bible says. 
And I'm looking at Acts 5 right here, and it's this is when they were arrested. The apostles were arrested for preaching the gospel, and they said, We strictly told you not to teach in his name, yet you're still here and you're teaching. What are you doing? And Peter said, Well, we apostles, we must obey God rather than man. And so I think that that's so important that no matter what the government says, the Bible Absolutely. is our law. You know, what God says for us Christians is what we need to live by. And I think that's ultimately just where we need to leave it at is like, you know, maybe God is a Republican, but I believe that we are supposed to follow the Word of God ultimately Absolutely. all the way. 100%. And that's, that's the way to go. Um, and, and that's ultimately what the, the book is saying, is that we have to follow the Word of God. And to do that, it, it is our duty here in the United States to put the right people in charge. You know, we can't just push that off. And so, I mean, a lot of people think that this is that the book is kind of silly. They, they think, oh, God doesn't care about politics, but God does care about the people. And especially in the United States, where it's up to us, we have to fight for our values and at least fight for our freedom. Because as our founders put it in the Declaration of Independence, that, you know, we have unalienable rights that are endowed by the creator. God gave us these mm -hmm. rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So when we see our liberty being eroded, I mean, we're seeing it all over the place right now with all these lockdowns and, 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 and things by the government, our liberty is being eroded and they don't have the authority to do that. That is endowed by the creator. God gave us liberty. We are supposed to be free and we have to fight for those freedoms. And I think God would want us to. All right. Well, Stephen, thank you so much for being a part of the podcast today. And I just want to let the listeners know that your book is on Amazon, correct? Yes. The God Bed okay. is on Amazon. All right. And how much are you selling the book for? Uh, it is on that. there for, I believe, three sixty nine for the ebook and fourteen ninety nine for the paperback. Right. Um, you can also find me on the godbet.com i have a, a website where i where i have uh, blog articles about current events uh, i'm also on facebook it's 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 called steven or it's steve connolly's brain on facebook all right you guys can find those links below and steven if i can have you in the podcast with a prayer i would really appreciate it oh absolutely um let's pray uh dear lord thank you for what what dallas is doing and uh, thank you for our country uh, here in the United States, where we are f fortunately free to make these decisions for ourselves, where we are not subjects of a dictator or or anything like that, where we are able to control what our our destiny is. Um, we need to come back to you and um, please, please give us forgiveness for uh, where we have fallen away from you and help the, help the country to come back to you. Um, we, we love you, Lord. And um, we, we hope that uh, we can, we can be more pleasing to you. Um, we ask these things in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. You've just listened to the Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast with your host, Pastor Chris Busher. Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast was recorded live in studio with final editing made before uploading. Subscribe today to Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast on iTunes or Google Play. For more fantastic daily content, visit Pastor Chris Busher online via Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Don't miss the next episode on Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast.